spider's web and we're going to be carrying on with our Duncan Saga series and we're painting our legendary elf figure and this is the original version again we're going to be changing it slightly for this one not too much I want the sim a similar colour scheme for the um, clothing but before I go into that a um, couple of things first um, the previous video I painted the legendary elf uh, sorry the legendary wizard and before that I did the um, barbarian and here they are now finished in all the finery the um, the flagstones has been bloodied and they're looking quite and nice another thing as well before I carry on I've been asked what the yellow thing is on my wet palette um, I have answered this before in a, a one or two videos um, but I just want to show you what it is again it's um, an extra thick sponge cloth I bought it from Asda um, and that's basically it um, any sponge cloth will do I suppose um, but that's the one I bought so there we are um, and one other thing as well um, somebody mentioned that the lock on my um, what do you call my new unit looked as though it might get in the way when I set up to do it um, it did it got in the way so basically I took it off there we are so that's that it's now all firmly flat here um, I might get something to go over this to disguise it a little bit there's a great big hole in the in the drawer but I'm not really forced to be honest um, but there we are that's on the queries and things I wanted to mention over and done with now let's get on with painting the elf so using our original figure as a um, as a template to work from um, it's just basically browns and greens isn't it so let's see what we can do we're going to add a few more different colors to this we're not going to keep it exactly the same color um, but uh, what I want to do is find a fairly pale skin tone um, Kisler flesh will probably do adequately and I want a few browns um, greens um, let's just get a handful of stuff shall we so first um, off as I always do I'm going to start with the skin tone there isn't much in the line of skin tone here his face and that um, elbow and that bit of an arm as well that's it so as I said, let's use Kisler flesh for our flesh tone um, I'm going to move this lamp off also you may notice I've changed my um, position the palette because and the video I did yesterday for the wizard I was getting in my own way so <laughs> um, I've changed the palette slightly and hopefully it will give you a better look at what we're doing so we're starting off with Kizzle of Flesh um, and using just the st standard brush we're just going to belt over the flesh tone areas there we are nothing special with this just slap it on make sure though that you're not obscuring any detail when we're doing this the last thing we want to do is obscure detail But if you do go over anywhere, it doesn't matter yet. We're not doing details, we're just putting colour on. Now let's face it, if you buy pre-ordered, or if you buy pre-painted stuff, you'll tend to find that 
the paint is all over the place it's not where you actually want it usually so we're just doing it to like a really bad or oh, another standard pre-coloured quality <laughs> unless I've just bought fairly dodgy pre-coloured stuff I don't know but there we are we'll keep that there for the time being and now let's have a think of what colours oops, we can use I'm just getting my piece of kitchen towel to dry my brush off right so I think for the cloak we're going to be using a similar green that has to be done um, and different shades of browns, different shades of greens. I'm going to add a bit more green into this fella um, rather than the browns. Um, so let's just wash my brush because it's uh, I've got some of the master's stuff on it. And let's get uh, on with what was planning, shall we? So for this area here, I said we'll do that in these two colours. Okay so the darker of the two colours I'm going to be using is Death World Forest. It's going to be a slight difference to how it... Um, let me just angle this round a touch because it doesn't look as though you're getting much light on the um, palette. Okay so we're going for Death World Forest here and for this we're going to use well this colour we're going to be using on like this breastplate kind of thing he has here and I'm just going to go all the way through that little bit of a bristle coming off I'm going to treat myself to some good sable brushes I think Um, very soon I think it's about time I've got some decent brushes rather than sticking with uh, synthetic ones I've used synthetics all the time so I'm going to have a nosy on uh, Rosemary and Cole's website and get some uh, brushes so that is what we have there. Next, what I said we'll do is using struck me paper towel. As I said we'll use wall boss green and scorpion green but I'm thinking of other areas as well so I'm going to start off before we go any further with scrag brow okay and the scrag brown is going to be going on to as many areas as I can as I can put it at the time for the time being um, so I'm going to put a bit of that out um, and I'm just going to put it to one side so I don't forget what I'm doing now this square brown is going to be going here I think I did say the scrub brown I was thinking of doing on the trousers but I've changed my mind as you may have noticed I'm going to do that in scrub brown um, 
Okay, and not just that, I'm going to do the gloves as well in scrag brown. But when I wash them, I'm going to wash them in different colours, so there will be a difference. Every time I do a painting, I've decided, well, not so much a painting, every time I paint a figure, um, I have plans on what I'm going to do, and then I have a tendency of just changing my mind at the last minute. So I don't really plan anything. Um, but having an idea of how you want to do it, and again, the paints associated is always handy. And then there's nothing really stopping you from um, changing your mind when you get down to actually painting the areas you want to paint. I'm not going to shift that out of the way for the time being. Okay, there we are. I'll scrub brown put on. Um, next, I'm thinking for the trousers. Death World Forest, which we've already used, haven't we? So I'm not going to use that one. Um, hmm. Actually, I've had another idea for the trousers. This one I didn't pick out in the first place, but I remember I've got it, and it's Doom Bull Brown. It's a very dark brown colour. probably do quite nice for the trousers. I'm going to change my brush now because my fact I'll do what I can with this brush first and then I will change when or if I need to. Oh, I think I may need to um, in a moment. I may be wrong though. I may be able to. No, I will definitely need to change. Um, trying to get to the back of some of these areas is going to be a bit tricky. Okay, so I'll just pack the doom bull brown on this and get it where I can. If I do accidentally go over somewhere, I've not painted that bit yet, so it doesn't make a difference. That's the attitude I've got. I'm not looking at getting it all perfectly placed at the moment. Um, obviously, anywhere that I have got paint on, I'm trying to avoid getting it on again. But again, it still doesn't matter because I can always acrylic paint. I can always go over it. Um, So that bit. Let's try and get it on there. And that's the Doom Bulb Brown. Still need to add a few other areas of this. Um, I've not finished at the moment. So I'm just going to wash out my brush and get a finer detail, finer brush. And then just go over. Actually, I've noticed that that is actually boot and not 
my shoe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and define where the, the boot starts and the trousers finish. Um, tell on one foot as I can on the other, never mind. Let's just see what we can do. Next, Rhinox Hide we will use for the boots. Once I've used a colour I'm putting it to one side so I don't get it mixed up with other colours and that way I know which ones I've used. Um, so this is Rhinox Hide, you can't see it because I've only blue paint over it but that's what it is. <laughs> I'm just going to add some of that to our palette. And then it's going to be for the boots. As you can see, I'm using a darker colour with brown to go over. boots even though I don't really need to um, because with it being acrylics I can just go over it and um, with a lighter colour but I'm doing this anyway can't quite get in the to see what I'm doing but I'm going to try and get where I can with this colour It's very, very tricky. Um, gluing these miniatures on the bases hasn't helped. Um, but never mind. Now, that's that done. Next, what we're going to be using is. We're just going to give those paints a chance to dry a little bit and we're going to be using Inky by Darkness and that's going to be for the uh, bow. So we don't really need a great deal of this but I'm just going to bang some on. And a bit too much on my, br on my brush there. This is a nice, very dark jade colour, well, very dark teal colour. I'm going to get in there with my smaller brush in a moment. Um, I'm going to be using a different colour for the end bit. I'm just going over to give it that base to work from. I'm hoping you can see this okay. I'm still learning with the new layout. I got used to doing this one way and uh, now everything's changed. <laughs> trying to get myself working in a different way um, hopefully it's working alright and that's almost it I just need my fine finer detail brush to oops 
pick this area out here without going over the fingers as much anywhere else need doing I can touch it up with this brush I've missed the and I've missed the it's a nice colour bob okay so that's the brush washed I don't know why I was going to say that's the brush done. That's the bow done, is the word I was looking for. Now let's get this bit done here. And for that we're going to be using Warboss Green. to do as well is watch when I'm putting the, uh, the paints up because I've put them near the uh, the previous pa previously painted miniatures I'm in danger of smacking them with me brush full of paint so <laughs> I'm not going with any set colour scheme in my head. Um, I don't know what Mantic's colour scheme for this character is. Um, it doesn't matter to me what anybody else's colour scheme is. Because um, I always say, this is my miniature, I paint it what colour I want to paint it. It doesn't have a uniform. I'm toying with the idea of getting another set of the hero figures, um, both from the base game and the one on the um, oh, what's the one for? these legendary figures, um, so that I can paint the dwarf. Is it the dwarf and the elf? I can't remember. Um, there's two characters in a later expansions that are the same race but there's no miniatures for them um, so I'm thinking of just getting another set of these and I can paint them different colours so I'm not using the same miniature for two different characters I'm not sure whether it work but I'm going to try it anyway and next um, Okay, so we're going to start off first of all with Abaddon Black. We'll see why very soon, hopefully. Um, again, this is one of those moments where I've changed my mind again from my original decision of what to do. <laughs> You'll get used to that. water just on my brush get into the black paint and that is going to be going on these areas here I know it's not a very elfy kind of colour elfy Elvish kind of colour, should I say? But we'll see what I'm doing fairly soon, hopefully. Staying black, let's put it that way. Mm. 
I'm just doing this as a base coat for what's to come. There we go. that bit. There we are. It's the time that I've been waiting for. It's the cloak. <clears throat> and for the cloak we're using Catalan green. Castellan green sorry. So we'll bang some of this on our old palette. There's that many greens on here and hopefully when I come to highlights, I don't get myself all mixed up, but... <laughs> there we, are. we can, again, if we want to add various highlights and things like that. Well, it's not a case of adding highlights. We can add trim and different colours if we wish later on, but for the moment, Let's just concentrate on getting the base colours done. Don't worry about the finishing touches yet. I always find that keeping myself open to change as I'm painting makes it a little more comfortable for me. But if you, if you count, if you don't have that mindset of thinking you have to have everything organised and you're doing this and that and whatever, then whatever works for you. But I always find that just going with the flow helps. And here we are. this will need another coat. I will do this um, off camera. I'm just showing you the colours I'm using and how it's going to look now. Um, anything different, I will do off camera. Um, in my mouth I was doing that because I didn't want to put it down and get paint everywhere um, yeah so I noticed a little bit of flashing that uh, I'd forgot to take off um, yeah so what I was saying is that uh, when you're painting do whatever works for you um, and like keeping everything open and free-flowing changing my mind quite a lot um, if that's not something that you can do don't worry do it your way everything to do with painting models is to do things your way they're your models you bought them you want to paint them paint them if you don't want to paint them don't paint them and while saying that this is always nice if you do paint them they look so much better but some people just don't want to some people don't take any enjoyment in painting um, if that's the case there are plenty of people out there who would happily paint them for you if you want them painted um, admittedly they won't do it for nothing unless you're looking you've got a friend who will volunteer um, But there are plenty of places out there who will paint them. But to be honest, I'm 
you don't for me you don't have to paint them but for me saying that painting is the hobby I have playing the games afterwards is a bonus I've said that from day one it's just the figures I enjoy collecting and painting the gaming aspect for me is just that icing on the cake <laughs> you know, and to be honest with you if you're not interested in painting but you would like them painted You know, I'm be. Quite happy to do them for you, but obviously. There will be a charge. <laughs> just enjoy the painting it relaxes me it keeps me calm it keeps me focused and that's the reason I do it I used to get little minis like this and just paint them for fun and somebody says what game system is that from and I'd look at them and say game you know I got a clue they actually came from a game I just found the figures in a shop and just painted them From the a store in the, in the, one of the shops in Wigan that used to sell miniatures like this, metal. I um, can't remember what it was called now. I'm just going and having a nosy. Saw something I liked, bought it, painted it, put it on a shelf, quite pleased with myself. Afterwards, when I found out there were gaming pieces, I thought, oh, handy. <laughs> right, so that's that bit done. Now, what I'm going to be using is Eshin Grey. I'm not going to be using a lot of this, so I'm not going to be putting it on the palette. Um, I'm just going to get a little bit on my fine detail brush. And that's just going to go on the scabbard. I'm in danger of dropping this miniature in a second. I'm not careful. So the And I'm also going to use it, I think, on the quiver for the arrows, just the main body of it, the extra bits. That's if I beg it, let's do the whole quiver in this colour. And I will change it later on. Mm. 
I'm saying then I should have really put some now on the palette, never mind. Oops, way too much paint on there. I must Say, this is going to change so in fact when it comes to highlighting I'm going to have to put some of this on the palette so I should ah what the heck never mind I changed my mind after I started doing it so not to worry <laughs> so there we have that And next, I'm going to go back into the, not the black, Fool, the dark brown that we did use for the boots, which was the Rhinox hide, and I'm going to finish the boots. Okay, so that's that. What I want to do next is the metal areas and now I've got everything hidden away. I can't find a thing. <laughs> I don't know what that's. Here we go. Found the one I wanted. Warplock bronze. Again, another one that I'm not going to bother putting on the palette. That's going to go on the tips of the arrow. No, sorry, on the tips of the bow. Like this. I still haven't covered all the uh, rhinoxide part. And I also want to go over the handle of the sword. tip here of this cupboard. Just like so. And hopefully I've got everything covered there. I'm going to get the ashing grey out and I'm going to put some on the palette because I will need it for when we highlight. And then when I've got the brush in the ashing grey I'm going to go with the bottom of this where I missed. <sighs> can't get the staff on out there. Fully aware can't get the staff. <laughs> and there we are. the boots here and underneath and that is almost it for this video what 
what I'm going to do now is just get a pale colour. Um, in fact, I'm not going to get a pale colour, I'm going to get a firmly dark colour, I think. And that dark colour is Screamer Pink. And this, I'm just going to get some on my brush here, just a little bit. Thank you. 